Hi everybody, my name is Douglas Gooding. I've been coming to Southside now for 20 years, so joined in the year 2000, uh, where we were meeting at Dunfoot Primary. Since then we went from Dunfoot Primary to Belmont Academy, and then we moved on to Auckland Crew, then we moved to Kyle Academy, then we moved to Town Hall, and we're now meeting all in our own homes. So I've been in Southside in lots of different locations, uh, but this is by far uh, the strangest one. However, on a plus note, set up and takedown has become a lot easier, so uh, every cloud has a silver lining and all that. So, my day job, I work in a school in Kilmarnock called Park School. It's a school for children with additional support needs, and I've been working there for the last two years. Obviously, with the school has been shut, I am working from home, but fortunately, my role within the school means that I can do a lot of my work uh, at home. However, I am missing the daily contact with the pupils and seeing their faces and working with them. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing them again and working with them again uh, whenever that might be. So, I've been asked just to take 10 minutes to talk about what God has been saying to me during this period of lockdown and how he's been speaking uh, to me and what he's been saying into my life. And I've really enjoyed listening to the other Take 10s that were on last week. I um, particularly liked um, Billy Porterfield's. I had to have a wee laugh. Um, I was listening to his, um, what he was having to say, but I was actually out in my garden. I was listening to it on my phone. And he was talking about how he's connecting with his friends and how he's um, connecting with them through his music. So they're sending each other playlists or sending each other songs uh, and communicating and connecting through that. And as I was listening to him talk to us about that, simultaneously I was checking on my rhubarb patch and my new blackberry bush and um, checking how my seedlings were doing and whether my cuttings um, had taken. And yeah, I had a laugh to myself and I'm sure you are very much aware of this already, but I did realise that Billy Porterfield is a lot more rock and roll than I am. So he's um, going through music and playlists and chatting to his pals about that and I'm um, talking to my plants. So anyway, we are, we're all different and we've, God's made us all different. We've all got different passions. We've all got different desires. We've all got... Uh, different callings on our lives and God's put us all in different places for different reasons and these are all um, unique to us and God has put us here for a reason. Now I don't know about you but I know a lot of folk have been having a wee clear out as well. I know some folk have been tidying up all their spice racks. I know some folk have been tidying up maybe their their CD collection or their vinyl now that that's coming back in or maybe been um, tidying up the food cupboards. For me personally, I've been uh, tidying up my bookshelves and that is not to suggest for a minute that I've read any of them. I've just put them in a nice order in their nice um, sections. But I did come across last week this book here, um, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Now, we worked through this as a church many years ago uh, and it's um, really... Um, worth a read now, I'm actually quite proud if you see it's quite tattered so it's actually proof that I've actually read this one uh, so I was having a wee flick through it last week and um, I was looking through some of my scribbles and some of my notes and I came across this um, sh very short um, passage that linked quite nicely with God, what God's been speaking to me about just now so I'll read it um, to you just now now it does, um, there is quotations from the Bible but I think it's from a different version I think it may be the message in case you don't recognise it immediately so I'll read it, it's from the chapter Using What God Gave You um, it says here your shape was sovereignly determined by God for his purpose, so you shouldn't resent it um, or reject it. Instead of trying to reshape yourself to be like someone else, you should celebrate the shape that God has given only to you. Christ has given each of us special abilities, whatever he wants us to have out of his rich storehouse of gifts. God wants you to enjoy using the shape he has given you. So God has given us all our own purpose, our own personalities, our own gifts, um, our own desires, because he has got a specific role, a specific purpose um, for you, and no one else can do it. God's gave it to you and through his strength. He wants to use us. Um, you've got this um, part to play. The message translation says in First Timothy, be sure to use the abilities God has given you. Now, another book um, is by Max Licado. It says, God loves you just the way you are. 
but he wants to make you even better. And God has really challenged to me. And this time, I personally have got more time in my hands. I've got more headspace. I've got more opportunity. And God's challenged me to, to take those gifts, to strengthen them, to grow them, develop them well. We all know the story um, of the talents, um, of what was given to them by the master. And the master just didn't want them to take the talent and just bury it in the ground and leave it. He wants them to be developed. He wants them to be used. And this is a perfect opportunity for me, and it might be for you too, um, for us to take the time to say, well, God, this is what you've given me. How can I um, develop that? So, um, yeah. I'm being pushed, I'm being challenged. There's things that God's speaking to me um, about some examples. I suppose I suppose three weeks ago, I wouldn't have thought for a second that I would be standing here talking to you. Um, three weeks ago, to my shame, I actually didn't know um, my neighbours' names either side of my house. Um, to my shame, there's lots of friends that I know are not walking with God that I can really have connected with over the last... Um, months, years, and I haven't, um, and God's challenged me to connect there, and I know he's also challenged me to actually touch some of those books on those shelves, um, and pick them up, and read them, um, and let God speak to me um, in this, this way. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, God's not actually spoken to me, God's not said anything specific to me in this time, God's not put any desire in my heart of what he wants to do with me, so I suppose a good starting point, and it's a starting point for me as well, is what is the two greatest commandments? Is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and also to love your neighbour. Now, COVID-19 doesn't stop either of these from happening. In fact, for a lot of us, it actually promotes it. We've actually, for some of us, got some extra time, some extra space um, for us to delve into God's word, to speak to him, to spend time with him, to to talk along with him as we go in our daily walk, um, whatever, um, to hear what God has to say to us. So, and as we search God, as we get to know him better, as we learn more about him, his desire for our lives, what he has done, what he's doing in our lives, then inevitably we will love him more. And as for love our neighbours, um, me personally, again, um, I've had more opportunity to be able to talk to them over the fence. And maybe um, if you're neighbours might be vulnerable or they might be elderly that you might need to help out in some ways um, it might be this new wonderful world of Zoom that our neighbours are people that are online it might be people that you're talking to on a Thursday night at 8 o'clock as you're all lined up along the street um, clapping the, the key work the NHS workers and the care workers so God has given those commands and God has given us the time and he is um, challenging me um, to actually can I actually live that in my daily life so yeah, things are coming to halt, things are different, life is different at the moment, but even though some of the things in life came to halt, God has not come to halt. God is still working, God is still speaking to us, God is still working in people's lives, and I am sure, okay, that when it comes to the end of this, there'll be so many of us, have got so many stories of what God has done in our life, what God has spoken to us personally, what we've seen God do in our lives, what we've seen God do in other people's lives, what God has done in our, in our families. Okay, so we know that God has continued to work and we have that faith. Um, nothing's going to get in the way of God. There might be some of our ministries that maybe I think that have had to stop um, temporarily, but that doesn't mean that God's stopped. Okay? God didn't let a simple thing like the River Jordan get in his way, he just split it, you know. So uh, God um, is far stronger uh, than any of us and far bigger than any of us and we can trust in him. So yeah, God's challenging me just to, to push in the things that he's called me to do and uh, not just to let it lie dormant here, but um, to take this time just to push myself, just to seek his will more and more and more uh, and develop and use the gifts that he has given me. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully very soon. Okay, so I'm just going to finish with the prayer. Thank you. Father, I want to thank you that in all this uncertainty, uh, in all this time where there is fear, there is all this time where um, people are maybe finding um, more time in their hands or um, they may be really stressed, they may be really worried, whatever it is, Lord, that we know that you are in control. We know that we can trust you and we know that as we search for your peace that you will give us your peace a peace that you say transcends all understanding, a peace that we cannot understand. Um, but we hold on to uh, that truth. We hold on to the truth that you are in control, that you are Lord uh, of all. And you're doing lots of different things in so many different people's lives. And there are people that are 
on their front line working so hard and we ask Lord Jesus you would protect them, that you would bless them, that you would build them, you would give them the strength day by day, hour by hour. Um, we know there's everybody has got their role to play here um, and Lord we just pray that we would be true to you, that we would seek your heart, your direction, um, your guidance and we look forward um, to hearing what you've been doing uh, throughout this time. We thank you that we can trust you, we thank you in your unfailing love uh, and we just hand over the gifts um, the desires, the passions over to you and Lord just ask that you would have your will uh, with us. Amen. <laughs>